Have you ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. Good afternoon. We're so glad you have joined us. Welcome to the show. This is Share on the Air Radio. And my name is Cielito Pascual. And this show is inspired by Share International Magazine. We're going to jump right into it. I'm so glad to be on the show with my co-host, Diana Gold Holland. Happy New Year, Diana. Hi, Cielito. Happy New Year to you and to all our listeners. To Good to be here. Listeners. Absolutely. All our listeners around the world. And welcome to those of you who are listening for the first time. Now, we never have enough time in this show and every topic we take on is so chock full of fascinating information that we enjoy sharing. So um, there might be, if you're new, I recommend you make sure you're following us. Uh, you're likely following us on Facebook on Share on the Air Radio North America. If you're not, go go to the page, and you'll see links. You'll see um, information. Um, things that will get you up to speed on the this extraordinary story that we are sharing um, that is providing hope for a, a possibility of tremendous hope for the future of all of humanity. And we're going to talk today about the top 10 myths or misconceptions about this story. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Diana, to give us a little background so that our newcomers are not completely out of the loop here. That's right. Let's uh, just go into the basic premises of our show for a couple of minutes and uh, get everybody up to speed on the same page. Basically, we have three premises here on Share on the Air North America. Uh, sorry, Radio North America. And uh, those are that, number one, we are not alone. Number two, we have hope of an help of an extraordinary kind at this extraordinarily crucial time in um, in Mother Earth's evolution. And number three, which is the uh, premise that we talk quite a lot about on this show, all of these various aspects, and that is that this form for Mother Earth and this form for humanity just now comes in the form of great teachers who are emerging now onto the world scene. They, uh, they walk among us quite literally and um, are helping us to effect these changes that we need in the world. Now, um, the, um, there are several masters of wisdom who are now among us, these great teachers, but I'd like to speak first about Maitreya, who is at their head. Maitreya is variously expected by all of the great religions under whatever name they call him, the Christ for the Christians, the uh, Messiah for the Jews, the Imam Mahdi for the Muslims, and as a great teacher for modern contemporary society uh, for those who have no particular religious uh, affiliation but who are open to spirituality and indeed who are living on this planet. So why is he here? As we have mentioned, he is here to help and guide us uh, through this crucial time with all of the special energies that uh, he can bring in from cosmic levels. He, uh, you know, very often in the New Age we talk about the Christ principle. Well, the Christ uh, 
actually does, em- Maitreya embodies that Christ energy on this planet at this time. That's why he's called the Christ. The Christ is a function in the um, hierarchy which is composed of these masters, these people who have perfected their human nature and gone on to having attained mastery over themselves into what we call the fifth kingdom. Now, that is a lot of information. It comes from the esoteric background, and um, we'll be talking about that later in the show and elucidating some of these points I've just made. I just wanted to get the basics down, and the bottom line is that Maitreya, at the head of a series of of a group of perfected beings, uh, are all here at this time, not only as one, quote, savior, which is not the case, but as a group, making a group apparition at this time because the age of Aquarius, uh, which we will talk about again in a minute, uh, is the age of the group, the age of the uh, collectivity. So all of this unfolds in, as a great cosmic plan uh, on cue to help us once again at this very, very crucial time. Oh, that's a great uh, summary. Uh, 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 you just hit all the great points there, Diana. And I, I will emphasize, as you mentioned, all of this comes out of a, um, a, 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 a great history of information um, through uh, the ageless wisdom teachings. We'll use that term often on the show and refer it, refer it, uh, refer to it often. Um, so we'll we'll. We'll uh, fill in as we go, but we'll jump in to the first myth, myth number 10. We're going to count down the same way we see uh, our television comedians do. Um, So uh, myth number 10, and I will say, the first thing that comes to mind is, is this a physical plane event? And it is. This is an event that is taking place, and I will also add, you always say it when you're hosting the show, Diana, we're not asking people to believe us. We are presenting this as information. That's and, right. Uh, if it has the ring of truth for people, let them let them share it if they like. Let them go and find out information, more information on all the sites we give. We're definitely not trying to convince anybody here, and um, that's for sure. So myth number 10 Maitreya is here to start a religion. That's a, a very typical response. And I, I give that some thought. You know, Diana, as I was uh, reading some of um, Benjamin Krem's books, Benjamin Krem, C-R-E-M-E, he is the author of, um, of many books. Uh, our information is based on uh, what he has published in his books and in the publication Share International Magazine. All of that can be found online. Um, But when we consider all that he's presented in the past 30, 35 odd years, um, it's quite a length of time that this information has been coming out. We see that starting a religion uh, in, in light of what is taking place is I, I think of it in terms of it's it's like a lemonade stand, you know, <laughs> it's opening a lemonade stand. A religion in the context of this is is it's just it's not big enough to address uh, all the challenges that this planet is facing. And the problem with starting a religion is how do we help the people who don't want anything to do with religion? So the so the truth of this uh, event and the body of information that uh, comes with it is that this is uh, for all of humanity. Maitreya is here as a teacher and a guide and uh, not as a guru. Um, and if we understand uh, two basic, whether you're spiritual or not, if we can understand and accept two basic principles that we are all interconnected, all of life is interconnected, and that there, for every action there is a reaction, if we can accept those two things, then we can begin to reconsider the way in which this world is operating. Um, and basically it's operating on the basis of 
greed and competition. And we are at that place uh, where life on this planet is in peril. And Maitreya's emergence uh, is in response to the cry from humanity. We have actually called Maitreya and the Masters into the world. Uh, they, they're not just popping out of nowhere. Uh, they're responding to us. And the central focus of Maitreya's work is along the economic and political lines, um, the, the economic and political systems that are dominating this planet today. And uh, he is here to inspire us. To That's right. He's here to mm-hmm. galvanize us, actually, into action, into, into the fulfillment of that longing that is at the basis of every human heart. That longing for love, for understanding, for, for unity. For unity, for connection, our longing for human dignity. Uh, th- those are basics. Those are things we... Uh, deserve to uh, assume our part our part of our existence, and yet it 's denied uh, to billions of people in the world um, and, and, and that and that is why that is why justice is the great cry just now justice in the world absolutely uh, Maitreya has said that the basis of just we 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 will never have peace unless we establish justice in the world. Uh, wars will continue as long as there is injustice. And injustice continues when we believe ourselves to be separate from each other. Uh, let's touch on another myth before we go to a break uh, really quickly, and we'll cover that after the break. Do you want to take on myth number nine, Diana? Ah, uh, yes, one of the biggies, that Maitreya is the Antichrist. Well... Oh, I hear the music starting. Yeah, I that's... guess we'll have to hold that till the next uh, next segment. <laughs> After the break. So that's All our right. teaser. Stay with us. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The Awakening of Humanity by Benjamin Krem is a concise, prophetic book about momentous changes soon to occur. It focuses on an unprecedented event, the emergence into full public life of Maitreya, the world teacher. Download the book free online. Visit shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the the inspired and and the inspiration. inspiration. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. We're back and we are taking on the top 10 myths 
about the emergence of Maitreya, the world teacher and the masters of wisdom. If you have questions, post to our page on Facebook, share on the air, Radio North America. And um, hopefully we'll have time in the show to answer those questions. Diana, myth number nine, Maitreya is the Antichrist. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's a very popular one, that, uh, especially among fundamentalist Christians who are terrified that a very seductive character will arise and uh, charm us all with his, with his charisma and magnetism and lead us down the path to partition. Now, why anybody would want to do that uh, <laughs> or believe that, but anyways... Um, that is a common, a common, very great fear of many fundamentalist Christians and others. So I would like to uh, present the views of Benjamin Cram, as you mentioned, um, British esotericist Benjamin Cram, who has quite a different explanation of this based on the ageless wisdom teachings. You can, of course, find out more about this on the website share, S-H-A-R-E, hyphen international dot org. But here's basically what he says. He says that the Antichrist is not such a charismatic person at all. The Antichrist is actually an energy. It is the energy uh, in the um, uh, Christian tradition, the uh, the, tr- uh, the the Trinity, the energy of the Father, the uh, first ray to esotericists. This basic this energy is basically the energy of destruction which is set loose every now and then in the world to break down old crystallized systems and to make new uh, room for the new building energy, which we call in the Christian tradition the energy of the Christ. So the Antichrist comes in at brief periods in history to break down that which is no longer effective and um, um, make way for the new. It um, it was released during the time of the second of the war, great wars uh, through Hitler and seven of his closest uh, allies, including some of the Italian um, um, military people and some of the militarists in in Japan. This energy worked through them, and of course, at the end of the Second World, you saw that the complete geopolitical reality of of the world had changed. Many countries had disappeared, others had been absorbed, what have you. The the old political, geopolitical system was completely shattered. Of colonialism. Yes, of colonialism, and before... Um, it was, according to Mr. Krem, released at the period of, of Nero um, and breaking down the Roman Empire. Now, the best thing of all about this, Silito, that uh, I find that our we're, we're leaders will, uh, listeners will be happy to hear, is that according to Mr. Krem, the Antichrist, which is an energy and not a person, has run its course. Oh, it has done goodness. its job, it is gone <laughs> for now, and it will not be, the energy of the Antichrist is now sealed off and will uh, be released once again briefly uh, around the middle of the next uh, age, the age of Capricorn, where this great battle will be uh, waged on the mental plane and not on the physical. So no. essentially, in answer to the myth, Maitreya is the Antichrist, Forget about it. Forget the about Antichrist it. Antichrist has been and gone and done its business. Done, done and gone. Yep. But there's other things that we have to deal with. So, <laughs> yeah. do you want to <laughs> take on myth number eight that myth the story eight. is new and out, and of, out the of the blue? blue? And I'm going to keep it brief because uh, we have so much to cover here, and I, I love our myths. Um, this story, the emergence of my joy and the masters of wisdom, did not come out of out of the head of Benjamin Cram and didn't come out of the blue. This is really part of the, uh, the, the, the procession of humanity's evolution. It is, we are in uh, the dawn of a new cosmic cycle. Uh, our evolution is based on continuous cosmic cycles. And at the, er- at the beginning of every cosmic cycle... Uh, a teacher steps forward to 
to uh, uh, to uplift, and you used the word galvanize earlier, Diana, I love that word, to uplift and galvanize humanity, uh, the, these teachers, you know, they, they present ideas um, that bring us forward in our evolution. So right. teachers that we've heard of. Uh, well, you're talking Strata. about the beginning of the Aquarian Age now, right? This is we this are new talking great about cycle. This, we're, yes, we are in the new cycle. We are in the Aquarian Age. We actually have been in a transition. The prior age was the age of Pisces. Uh, this is recognized by astronomers. Uh, the, these ages are delineated by the relationship of the solar system uh, and its movement through the heavens in relationship to certain constellations and those Con, the, the, that movement uh, and relationship lasts for about 2,000 years. So we have been moving out of Piscean, the Piscean Age and Piscean Energies and into the Aquarian Age. So how do, we, how, how, do we, how do we demonstrate that? Like what's happening that's showing us that there's this transla- transition is occurring? Well, the most obvious thing is that there's tremendous conflict in the world because we're seeing the demise of of one age and the galvanizing of a new age. So there's a conflict between the old world and those people who are adherents of the old ways of doing things, clinging to those old ways, and we have the, the new generation um, of people embracing change, embracing a new way of looking at life. Uh, ready to let go of the old forms. And, yeah, and let, me, let me just add, add here that, you know, as the energies of Pisces recede, all of those institutions, those great institutions that the loyalty and devotion of Pisces helped to create, the hospitals, the schools, even, you know, originally the banking, all of this was done to serve society at that time. But now as the energies recede, they, they, these institutions are crumbling because the energy is not feeding them that was once um, so pure and is now um, yes. taking off. And the age of Pisces is distinguished by uh, one of the things is idealism. Mm-hmm. The age of uh, Aquarius, you use the term group in your introduction, that the masters are emerging as a group. This is a group endeavor. That is the characteristic of the age of Aquarius. Endeavors are happening in groups. Um, it is about uh, synthesis of, of uh, groups, of nations, of ideas. And uh, so... so yeah. and, and, and there are also even, you know, the groupings that are forming, like, globally through such things as the Internet. To me, the Internet is a perfect example of the beginning of this, of this age of synthesis. It's where we are able to connect and reflect, uh, uh, connect with each other, reflect upon who we are, um, uh, de- definitely, and have access to ideas that are connecting to us. But technology alone is not going to transform our planet, as we know, um, and uh, that let's see what's our next myth <laughs> because time is ticking by here and uh, I want you to have okay oh, well let's, the story is not well known yeah let's yeah. go over that quickly mm-hmm. um, the, the the story is quite well known there are many many leaders uh, who have actually met personally with Maitreya uh, starting in um, in the early in in sorry that phase started in the in about nineteen. Uh, 88. Uh, we talked about this on a previous show with Patricia Peachon. I believe that was the 6th of December, if anybody wants to go and listen to that one. But uh, Maitreya has actually, had actually appeared at the time to many, many, many world leaders uh, who may or may not have listened to him because he did not necessarily appear to them as, um, you know, a religious figure. Um, he appeared to, um, I think, was one of the bushes as a gardener or a bodyguard. I don't remember to Bush exactly. Senior. He but, appeared to yeah. Bush Senior as a, 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 what do you call those? Security. What do you call Security secret, guard. Secret, he, he appeared once as a secret agent. Right. Secret agent, not secret agent. What do you, you know, the yeah, yeah. security detail. And, you know, he apparently appeared to the king of Saudi Arabia as his brother and gave him uh, very good advice, which unfortunately was not heeded. But that night at dinner, um, the, brother, the 
king of Saudi Arabia wanted to talk about some of the points his brothers had made, and his brothers said, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he um, also appeared to, and this was covered in the news, he appeared to, uh, at the time of the Gulf War in 91, appeared to Saddam Hussein, but Saddam Hussein misinterpreted. Yeah, he said, your guns are pointed in the wrong direction. Maitreya told him that his yeah. guns were pointed yeah. in the wrong direction, yeah. and Saddam uh, uh, Hussein interpreted it in his own way. Uh, he's appeared to, may I say, he, uh, he appeared to Nelson Mandela. Yeah, I was going to mention that mm-hmm. now. Go ahead. Nelson. Yeah. Well, no, go ahead. He did to Man- Nelson Mandela when he was in prison, and... Um, they established, you know, um, Mandela refused to leave prison till some of his conditions for breaking down apartheid were were put in place. Uh, he's appeared to Gorbachev. He's appeared to um, many, many world leaders. So let's just move on from that. People can check yeah. that out on share-international.org. There was a cadre of journalists that were trained uh, early in the... Um, in, in, in this uh, new phase of the emergence uh, to get the word out. And, you know, as a, re- as a result of the many um, people who have helped make this um, message public, but most especially Mr. Krem himself, um, actually, it is apparently many millions of people who have heard of this story. Now, they don't necessarily have to believe it. They don't necessarily have to accept it. Um, but... They have heard of it. They have heard of Maitreya. They have heard of the of the need for for sharing and justice in the world. And um, I don't remember the exact figures, but of these thirty five million, um, quite a few people are open to the story and uh, and believe it. But you know, we don't even have to look at these this kind of things, and you know that we're telling, we're saying so. Look at all the groups all around responding to the energies, responding to the energies of love and tolerance that are pouring into the world through Maitreya, and actually making up their own minds and and uh, galvanizing themselves. There's certainly a very different trend happening in the world. And people are responding to the energies of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. So uh, it's it's important to look at the news. We'll be back after the break. We have myth number uh, 654321 to, <laughs> to cover next. So stay with us. If you have any questions, post our message. The future of Internet radio is here. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Are you on a spiritual path and want a quick reference guide? Look no further. The booklet Ageless Wisdom Teaching introduces key spiritual concepts, including reincarnation, meditation, and initiation. Download the book free online. Visit shareontheairradio.org for details. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Hey ladies, do you want to have that good hair day feeling all the time? Gentlemen, would you want your special someone to have that glow letting you know she is feeling completely satisfied? This feeling and that glow can be yours by embracing your sexual power. So join me, Rachel Kenley, award-winning romance author on The O-Spot. The O-Spot will guide you to that peak with guest interviews, book discussions, and conversations on the thrills of sexual empowerment. Put the zing back in your life. Come up and see me sometime on the O-Spot, live on Hump Day at 10 p.m. Eastern. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. The Real Conscious Connection 
Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back. Share on the air radio. Uh, this is Cielito Pasquale with her co-host Diana Gold Holland. We love sharing this information, and I I really appreciate this opportunity through Om Times Radio. Hey, let's get right into this, uh, Cielito, and let's. Uh, why don't you tackle myth number six? That myth Maitreya and the Masters are remote spiritual beings. You know what I miss saying under myth number eight, the story is new and out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Um, I missed, we were talking about the cyclical nature of, of human evolution. And I did not mention our prior teachers who have helped us. We want to honor our ancestors. Uh, some of the teachers that uh, have came forward at critical points in our evolution were Hercules. Hermes, Rama, Mithra, Confucius, Zoroaster, and here are some names you're familiar with, Krishna, Buddha, Christ, and Muhammad. So again, as you can see, that spans quite a number of uh, centuries in line with this astrological procession of the ages through the, uh, through the, through the zodiac belt. So, so indeed, this event is unprecedented, the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. However, it, it follows in line with what has happened uh, before. So, uh, myth number six, Maitreya and the Masters are remote spiritual beings. Well, first of all, they are, I love to call them our eldest brothers and sisters of humanity. Maitreya is our eldest brother. Uh, meaning that uh, he, we are all on the on the journey of perfection, to being harmless in thought, word, and action, and that's what a master is. Some, sometimes we cringe at the term master, but it refers to mastering the life, physical life process to become completely harmless, and we are all on that path. Uh, the masters have achieved that. And um, they achieved it by experiencing every human joy and human sorrow that there can be. Um, uh, we've all lived hundreds of thousands of lifetimes. The masters have uh, uh, lived those lifetimes too, so they know they they are not they are not unfamiliar with what we're going through. And uh, so that's the first thing to understand about masters. They're not uh, snickering at us. <laughs> no, in fact, at, from, yeah. from some of the experiences people relate to us, we know that they have a very, very, very deep understanding of the human heart. And that's another reason they're called the masters of wisdom. And they're also referred to as the lords of compassion. Mm-hmm. Many people who say they have experienced, they've had an experience with an angel... Are actually they actually had an experience of a master? Um, uh, masters, Maitreya and the masters appear to us. They have uh, um, when we read about disasters, whether they be earthquake disasters or or man-made disasters. Very often, when I read the news, I'm looking for those miracle stories of survival. Um, that's because the masters are there immediately to help. Uh, as 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 they are able to, and within the law of karma, so um, uh, they are there for us. They are not, um, although they have dwelt in remote regions of the world, uh, in the remote mountains and deserts of the world for millennia upon millennia. They have consciousness to be present with us, um, and. Um, there's you know what I like yeah. most about part of their message, uh, Silito, is the masters are, say they are the guarantee for us that one day we shall express our divinity as fully as they do. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely, absolutely. It's like uh, Roger Bannister running the um, the the, the four-minute mile. <laughs> once, <laughs> once he did that, then a whole bunch of people were able to do it. You know, the things that were once impossible uh, uh, be, be become possible when one person does it. So uh, Maitreya and the Masters have achieved something that is achievable for all of us. And they are here to to make that known to us 
and to create the possibility, great possibilities for us uh, here on Earth to to re- rebuild our world on more just and sane lines. So, speaking uh, of that, yes, shall we yes. try to jump into number five and see if we get that one done before the break? Okay, jump right in, Diana. Okay, myth number five. Maitreya is advocating sharing, which is the same thing as communism. Well, a what's lot wrong of people with that? are well, a lot of people are afraid of the word communism. It's like, you know, everything that isn't Western, as we were mentioning yesterday when we were talking about this, uh, you know, so many things have been lumped under the term communism, you know, totalitarianism, mm-hmm. uh, all kinds of dictatorships and everything like that. Anything that has to do anything with sharing is communism. Well, that in itself is is a myth. Um, communism was a political system. It's now um, shattered. But at all events, um, Maitreya's priorities are not communism uh, in that the sharing of food and shelter and the right to education and health care these things are fundamental. They're, they're inscribed in the UN Declaration of, of Human Rights. Yes. That's rights a ba- basic, as a human being, basic, basic human rights. Basic human dignity. Exactly. And so, um, but unfortunately, there is not one country in the world today that has fully guaranteed that for all of its citizens. Not one. So my, or, my Treya's priorities are very sane and they are very basic and compassionate. Um, I would say I was, that the first thing that uh, uh, will be accomplished when Maitreya emerges into full public life, um, which is which is soon, we don't know the date, but soon, 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 is the ending of the abolition of all hunger in the world. There's just no reason for it. So that that would be the first action for humanity to take. Right. Now, some people are going to wonder, well, how can we do that? Um, one of the things is that the one of the great principles of this sharing is the U- UN has a blueprint in place for this sharing, and it has to do with with a sophisticated form of barter, whereby every country will you know take a look at its take a survey of its resources, and be able to know what it has uh, you know in plenty, what it has a surplus of, that can be contributed. And each nation has something in surplus and that a redistribution can be affected, uh, you know, using some of the modern tools we have. It is not impossible. It is not impossible to, um, to make this sharing available when the political will is there. I, I want to say that, you know, evidence of the utter failure of a prevailing economic system is that it's convinced us that sharing is impossible. Uh, you know, we, we, we live on the basis of extraordinary myths every day. Yeah. Um, that are in, in point of fact, we're brutalizing each other upholding these myths. And, um, I'll, I could go on and on, but I won't. But <laughs> I just had to say that, that, that we are hypnotized to believe certain things are impossible. Um, by by the the mental conditioning we get from our education systems, by our, our 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 economic and political systems, we are convinced of things that are simply uh, simply not true. And the truth is that uh, there is that enough justice, to go around. There is enough to go around, and social justice is not is no longer an option if we do not establish right relationship on this planet, or social justice for every human being, providing food and shelter and health care and education for every human being, we, we won't have a viable planet to continue on. So, well, of course, the danger of the current, the, the current big danger is the, the economic imbalance in the world. Um, you know, in a world where 80 people, 80 Units, 80 individual, have the, have the same amount of wealth as 6.5 billion. That's half the world's poorest people have as much money as the 80 top people. You know, um, 
President Jimmy Carter was on Oprah this morning, and uh, you know he 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 was asked um, what he thought of the transformation since since he was was president, and he was very regretful. He said that the U.S. has changed from a democracy to an oligarchy. Mm-hmm. Now, an oligarchy is a system whereby a few powerful people reign uh, basically for their own benefit. And he said, you know what he said? He said he would not run for president today because, among other things, the cost of doing so would be to raise two to three hundred, two hundred to three hundred million, I believe mm. it was what he said. I Don't quote me, but I think that's what he said. It was something outrageous. Some exorbitant amount. Now, can can you imagine what we could do with 200 or 300 million on this planet today? That you know, we could, we could irrigate half, you know, all of Africa. We could eradicate scourge diseases. I mean, there were just, there's no <laughs> end of things that we could do with two and three, two to 100, 300 million. And, you know, you were mentioning about how we're, we're conditioned to believe that, um, is sharing cannot occur. Well, how come we watch on TV all these reports of, you know, the uh, military spent X number of millions on, you know, a couple of planes uh, mm-hmm. last week. And, uh, you know, a toilet seat in the military is like $500,000 by the time the right. appropriations are considered. I mean, this, we watch these things and we just let them go by. Well, here's a point that I want to get to before the break, so we don't get too resigned here. This is why Maitreya and the Masters are here, to awaken ordinary people to our power. Our power. You know, we do, we hold more power than we think. And the power of taking action, the power of, uh, we'll get into this a little uh, later, but we can make a difference in all of this. This is not, we can no longer afford to sit by and uh, and and sit by passively. Unfortunately, we we all of us will have to do some heavy lifting to transform this planet. And Maitreya and the Masters are here to show us that we have the capacity to do that. We we can do that. They know we will implement sharing, and we will be able to to heal the extraordinary imbalances on this planet. And it's their love that will inspire us. We will awaken. You know, we're at the dawn of a cosmic age, but it's time to get out of bed. (laughs) Right. And you know, we know that sharing is the answer. Everything else has been tried that has failed. Yes, yes. So we'll talk more about taking action after the break. Thank you for staying with us, listeners. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Want to help build the coming golden age? Want to experience the Aquarian energies of love, light, and power? Transmission meditation is a simple way for you and two or more friends to do just that and accelerate your own spiritual growth at the same time. Check out transmission meditation at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Dot O-R-G. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. If you want- 
want to send us email, you can send that email, send your questions, send your comments, send your feedback to info at shareontheairradio.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Or post to our Facebook page, shareontheairradio.org is our website. And, um, you know, Diana, if the world's wealth, supposedly, if the world's wealth were distributed completely evenly, every adult human would have about $51,600. Wow, what does that tell you when so many people in the world today exist on less than a dollar a day? Yes. So, uh, I think we've covered... We've covered uh, myth number four, Maitreya describing a world that is utopian. I think we got that one. And then um, we have a couple more, but there is uh, myth number three. Myth number three. Have we, uh, uh, you want to cover that one? Uh, ah, yes, myth number three. The world is getting worse. In fact, it's going to hell in a handbasket. So there's no way to change things or... It's too late. Um, Good one. Man isn't worth saving. Now, <laughs> what kind of frequency does that give us for the planet? I don't think anyone. So many people are, you know, are resigned to this. Yeah, I don't think anyone thinking that is listening to this show. But let's cover it anyway, in case you're you're going to meet with your uncle yep. Charlie and you want to, you know, share something positive. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know. Well, you know, basically. Um, Peace is not an option. You know, we need justice and peace now or forget about it. No more planet. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, it goes back to this maldistribution of resources that you mentioned. You know, desperate people will do desperate things. And we see that with the terrorists blowing themselves up and what have you. I always, I always figure, you know, if someone has, uh, if, if you have a family... And your children are well fed and they get to walk to school feeling safe and they come home from school feeling safe and happy and they do their homework and there's food uh, in the fridge and, uh, you know, your, your grandparents can get the health care they need. They just go, go, go down the street to the clinic. You know, why would anyone destroy their, their, themselves and other people? You would focus on your family. Well, not only that, you know, look look at all the, the workers in the world who are displaced. You know, the, the South Africans who must leave their families to go work in the mines so oh. that they can send home money. I mean, there are people all over the world, you know, not being with their children because they have to be somewhere else sending home money. Plus, climate change is disrupting just, just I mean, it, millions and millions of people. Um, as we see, you know, climate change is leading to wars. The wars are leaving, leading to displaced people, as we see in Syria. It's it's serious. It's very okay. Serious. So, so give something Silito, else here. here we are. Here we are contributing to this myth. That but we're being real. We're just getting real. That's well, what's yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is. But um, you know, let's let's talk for a minute. That uh, let's talk for a minute about the sword of cleavage. Now, that's, you know, a term that you first hear in the Bible and whatnot. And it's essentially, um, Maitreya comes with this side, sort of cleavage. Uh, you know, he's, he's not back here with sugar-coated uh, aphorisms about all is well. And, and, you know, when he said, the Christ said that he would return in such a time as we think not. And that he would bring... Not soft words uh, of spurious peace, but the sword of cleavage. Now, the sword of cleavage is the, is a sword that separates father from son and brother from brother. It tears families apart when they cannot agree on 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 you know what needs to be done and how to do it and all this kind of thing. The, we are seeing the sword of cleavage very much in action today, and the where sword families of- are. Di- Divided. Yes, the sort of cleavage, uh, ironically, is the effect of uh, of of love. 
yeah. the energy it is, Well, that's what love. it is. It, mm-hmm. it is the energy of love. And that energy of love is stimulating everybody. So those who are loving and compassionate and all those things, and those who work for justice and sharing, yes. But love is also, ironically, stimulating all of the ones who also are fomenting division, creating strife, creating fear and terror and mayhem in the world. This energy of love that the Christ brings stimulates all things. It's and magnifying. This is, it's, magnifying it's magnifying the energy yes. of love and it's magnifying the energy of division. Right. And so so what's, the, what's the, the upshot of all that? What happens? Well, what it does is the short of cleavage clearly shows the different paths that are the two paths you know either we 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 change or we perish there's no other choice Mm -hmm. and so it is making that division very very clear and showing us that we are at a pivotal point to make the true true source you know the true choice for for our future and that the future of everyone not just the poor and the hungry but of all of us yes the, it, so, it, it makes the choice clear. It's either this or it's that. It's either work, share, and save the world, or we go to hell and hell. Perish utterly. Says perish Mishra. utterly. Those are his exact words. Yeah. So it's each of us that needs to choose, uh, you know, which side of this we're on. But the sort of cleavage, and we're seeing that work out today makes that very very clear you know and there are people responding to the energies of love uh calling for sharing and justice freedom and peace and restoration of the environment without knowing anything about this information young people are just responding spontaneously and uh uh, just just they are on the front lines without a second thought um, yeah, which is great. And nobody, they don't even have to know about this story. And then by the same token, Cielito, you'll know that it, we, well, we realize that, you know, what are all these scandals that are surfacing? What is all this muck in politics? What are all these, these aberrations and these, these just plain ridiculous, um, things that are coming up of that nature? All of that is the, the dregs of this, Piscean age energy that we were talking about. Yes. It's it's like the muck is rising to the surface so it can be cleared away. Yes. And, Just and, all the conflicts, all the hmm? yeah, aberration is a good word because we we are living in a world that is not in acknowledgement of who we truly truly are. We are we have created structures that oppose who we inherently are and rebuilding a world means creating structures that honor our divinity, the divinity of humanity. Um, so thank you for that explanation of sort of cleavage. I hope that illuminates things for our audience. Um, well, if that, doesn't, if that doesn't, the news will. <laughs> the news will. Uh, myth number two, uh, let me just, we have about five minutes. I want to promote our next show really quickly. Next week, Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, we will have Ira Palmer, lovely man, extraordinary uh, influencer in his community in the in, in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. He's a student of the w- Ageless Wisdom Teachings. He has presented this information that we are sharing here. He has presented it at conferences for the uh, Congressional Black Caucus, for the NAACP, and he will talk about why. African Americans and the communities of color respond to this story of the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. So, tune in for that next Sunday. Myth number two. Yeah, let's get them. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Yes. Let me do this. Myth yes. number two that Maitreya and the Masters are here to fix everything. Well, this is magical thinking. By cosmic law, the Masters cannot infringe free will, they are not allowed to do that. So, they can't fix everything here for us, but they can lead and counsel from their greater understanding of the laws of life, and that they are ready and eager to do. But it is up to us, as ever, up to humanity to do the building. They will lead and counsel. Mm -hmm. They present the blueprints, but we, we do the heavy lifting. We do the building. Myth number one, there is nothing to do but wait for Maitreya 
and wait for what's called the Day of Declaration. Some of us who know this story, well, anyone who knows this story well, and some of our audience does, knows about the Day of Declaration, where Maitreya, uh, through the world's media, will present uh, the choice to humanity um, in a televised event where we will not hear him speaking, but we will hear his voice in our own language in our heads. That, that was really fast, but you can go to... Uh, uh, share share international dot org and see all the details there. There is a lot for us to do. Uh, if you believe in any aspect of this story, if you believe in nothing but you believe in sharing, talk about sharing. Um, talk about it with your friends. Get involved in your community that has you connected to people establishing social justice in your community. You don't have to do a big flashy thing. What's happening in your neighborhood? There are people fighting for social justice in your neighborhood. Um, Most of us who live in big cities see people sleeping on the streets. Um, Most of us in big cities know that there's a tremendous amount of injustice happening to young people, to people of color, um, uh, just just the side effects of the wealth disparity in the world is manifesting uh, on on every uh, every street in every city in every community and there is action to take so if you if you hesitate at certain aspects of this story no worries work for social justice if you find this story fascinating Learn more. Visit our website. Visit our Facebook. Share this show with your friends. Talk about it. Explore the information. And uh, learn more. Uh, The purpose of this is really to give us a sense of hope that there's reason to take action. Diana, is there anything you'd like to share as we wind up? I just want to echo your words and to state that it's, you know, people are feeling a great change. You might have even have been inspired by a master to hear this program or to check out one of the Benjamin Krem books. And there's transmission meditation. That's an extraordinary practice um, that uh, Diana and I do and many thousands of people. Transmissionmeditation.org. That's a tremendous service, meditation for the world. Thank you, Diana. This was so much fun. Tune in. On Thank next you, Silito. Join us next week, Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific. Yeah.